What's up, Stella? <laughs> Hello. Hey, Alvin. Welcome to the People's Choice Podcast, episode 16 of my interview section uh, session of Ann Camp. That's words out. Uh, <laughs> of course, I mess up as soon as I start recording. I know. It's, it's nerve-wracking. A little bit. How are you doing, Stella? <sighs> I'm good. It's super hot. Super, super hot today. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm great. I mean, really, no complaints. Thankfully, no complaints on my way. But how about you? I'm doing shoot fantastic, really. <laughs> like I know the show is just growing more and more, and I feel like I'm getting really good at this now. <laughs> it's crazy. Sixteen, like the fact that you held it, like to, I, honestly, I'd be like, who am I supposed to interview? I only have five friends. Like who am I supposed to you? <laughs> this is good. You know, I mean, that's how I am as a person. Like if I start something and i feel like i'm not good at it i'm like next it's yeah and terrible. it's crazy with podcasting because like even though this is like my episode 16 of like far as interviews but like i have like two extra episodes from my sessions like series because i'm really trying to build like a universe of like i don't know let me just be like a podcaster i want to be <laughs> like i want to have my own universe of like here's the people's choice and then it's like my interview section. Then I got like my don't hate my take that I did for like sports section. Then I got my sessions for people who aren't really comfortable with interviews. They just want to talk about topics and stuff, which we can do all that. And then uh, I got my review section too. So it's like, I'm probably really technically maybe around 20 something episodes in if I combined all that. <laughs> A jack of all trades. I try. I try. You know, <laughs> I know you're supposed to be interviewing me, but like, I'm just so curious as like, what made you want to do a podcast? All right. Yeah, sure. This is great. <laughs> Cause, um, so it all started back in like, well, you know, me, I mean, for all my peeps that don't know me from back in the day, Stella, I mean, me and Stella go way back. I mean, shoot it. At least sixth grade, at least. Oh my God. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I was kind of a jokester. I like to talk a lot. I used to get like in trouble a lot. And not I think because that's I was... why we connected was because we stayed talking. Always, yeah. So <laughs> as I got older and just was kind of getting tired of like working, just like job jobs, which I mean, I'm still working a job job, but. I was like, man, I really think I want to do a podcast because this seems cool. But I let my confidence kind of like hold me back for years because I was kind of on the podcast wave around 2015, 16-ish. Right. But I was like, I don't know who wants to hear about Elvin. You know, I'm thinking, so, you know, a guy from, you know, Connecticut and live in North Carolina, Hardin County. No one cares. But after a while, and especially with the pandemic happening and everything was just so uncertain, I was like, you know what, if... I want to do this. It's now or never because nothing's guaranteed. Like I could die tomorrow. Like there's no exactly. time. So I just went all in and now I'm literally, this is my six month today. Actually it marks my six month anniversary <laughs> and I'm growing. Like I'm legit, basically almost global in like six months. Like that it's crazy. Awesome. Now, I ain't front. Now, I ain't going to sit there and be like, I got millions of views because I ain't on Joe Rogan level yet. Or, I, but I got some thousands up in there. And that's, and hey, and I don't know that's the whole, like, I know that kind of sets you back with the whole, oh, I'm in Harnett County, like, no one's really going to remember me. But the fact that you have a thousand, fo- what is it, subscribers, followers? Yeah. Well, um, viewers, viewers. It's, viewers? it's all the place. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty big too. So, yeah, my my second to last video was my highest one with like 2.3k, and I was just like, whoa! And I was on Facebook alone. I wasn't even counting like the audio from like Spotify, Apple, and then like YouTube. Oh wait, you're on Spotify? I'm everywhere. I'm I'm everywhere. I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm, take, I'm taking over. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay. Can't, can't stop. Won't stop. Hey, I, I thought that you were solely just on YouTube. No, no, I'm all over the. Oh, place. that's awesome! I'll, oh, show, I'll show you the link. To you on Spotify. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, just people short podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'm literally everywhere, and it kind of gets challenging because, like, I do have so many different platforms. But really, that was why I wanted to do podcasts because I knew I could connect with people. Um, I'm, I think I'm okay with interviewing. I mean, people tell me I'm really good for like not having like proper training or going to school for it. Yeah. But I don't know. It's just it's fun. It's really fun. Like it's, it's like, just it's like a 
Yeah. <laughs> you know what you do best in high school? Just talking. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, I can bring it way back to that. I'll just talk, 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 talk. <laughs> But I'm sorry. Let me let me <clears throat> let me properly give you an introduction, ladies and gentlemen. This is Stella Hagwood, one of my one of my closest friends. Last time I've seen her though was like probably prom. Like last time I seen you in person, I know. But we always kept in contact through like you know social media and stuff. So if you want to take over, you give a small introduction to my peeps out there. That's why I call my my fans. I only call them fans and peeps. My peeps. <laughs> oh man wait was i supposed to say something sure yeah so give, <laughs> give a little introduction to for yourself you know oh my gosh see <laughs> now i'm so scatterbrained right now i'm just i'm everywhere um so yeah so i'm stella i am from Fort bragg or fateville um two six I, I whoop whoop! I say that I am from. I mean, I'm a military background. Okay, my dad's military. I'm military affiliated from my dad. So, um, I say I'm from North Carolina only because I've stayed here the longest, and uh, I was born here. But um, you know, my mom being from a different country, she's from Italy. I know you can probably remember that. So, um, every time my dad was deployed to like um because we've been to Oklahoma and I think that's like the, really the only place I remember mm -hmm. um but every time my dad was deployed to Korea or to I don't know I think he was deployed to California once and like all these places my mom and remember there there's five of us total mm -hmm. mom and my mom didn't have anyone in the states when she immigrated here so she was like you know what I don't know anyone here I have these five crazy kids <laughs> um by myself so i'm gonna go to italy um that's where her support system was so i remember a lot traveling back and forth from like north carolina and from italy so like i was born here and then i, I grew up in italy and then that's when we officially moved back here in the fifth grade or when i was in fifth grade so oh. yeah, <laughs> What was Italy like growing up? Because I know you, you said from basically from childhood to like fifth grade before you moved back to North Carolina, but like, what was it like for you? From what I remember, I, I was always around my family. I mean, my mom's side of the family is ginormous and she's super close to them. I know with my dad, he's, he's close with his side of the family, but a majority of them has like passed on and he's originally from Detroit. Um, mm -hmm. So the majority of them live there. Um, but from my mom's side, just growing up in Italy, I just, I mean, my friends were my siblings, so <laughs> I really didn't like, I didn't really didn't have any friends and because I had my siblings and I just remember, um, when we were in Italy and we used to live off base, we never lived on base, um, because we, we, we spoke it. So, mm -hmm. um, I remember the time that the house that we were living in in Italy was, kind of like in the my mom's from the countryside of italy oh, italy has a country what so yes learning country. something new yes mountains greenery okay. all the past. um compared to like milan milan and rome they're more like they're more city mm -hmm. um, so i remember just running around in like a big open field with my siblings just playing calcio which is soccer um and just just being outside 24 seven, that's it. And fresh fruit, but that's, I miss, <laughs> I miss the vegetables and the fruit so bad over there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Cause um, like over here in the States, like we got to spray all these chemicals, trying to keep like what bugs and stuff away. And uh, we don't get it fresh, fresh. Not like it is. Right. Over there. And the farmers there, the farmers, that is like, that's their, I, I know there are farmers here in the States that that's their dedication, but in Italy, it's a whole, they are, I mean, just Europe in general, they just care about produce and just are really cautious as to what, they give their animals and what they put on their fruits but everything is fresh everything is ugh. i'm just like i'm just salivating here just thinking about the <laughs> food over there um but yeah I, it's just so even the air is just super different um but everything is just so clean and so that's all i remember from italy just running around acting like acting a mess 
<laughs> and um, just being outside 24 seven, that's, that's all you can really, all you can really do. See, it's it's crazy because like my next episode actually is about that's about to drop. Uh, well, before, by the time this comes out, it's already gonna be out there. But I actually interviewed um, uh, a rapper from Italy. Well, she's living in Italy right now, and she's an amazing, amazing woman. Yeah, I saw your preview of her. Yeah, oh, cool. she, she is awesome, and um, we didn't touch too too much about Italy, but she told me kind of like how it's currently right now, where she's living in during the pandemic of stuff so like it's cool hearing your side of italy like how you're describing when you was a kid now to go to a whole different culture shock what was it like coming to north carolina because i remember when i left connecticut and came to north carolina it was uh <laughs> very different <laughs> i mean i i don't know because i don't know how to exp- i don't i don't think i was really shocked when I came to North Carolina because I mean having my dad I mean I did have my you know and plus he's like he's not a country boy but he's kind of uh he's from Detroit too but he's kind of got that like I don't know how to explain it I really don't know how to explain it but when I first moved to North Carolina I mean I really didn't think of anything again I was born here Mm -hmm. so like I really didn't remember um I just, honestly, when I moved to North Carolina, there was just a lot of, um, especially as a mixed kid, because mm-hmm. um, my dad's black. So just when I remember my first day of fifth grade, oh, I was bullied a lot because I looked Aww. different. Um, and so that's what I really remember is just getting stares. And I remember like going to the grocery store if my mom was to speak to me in Italian or I was to say something in Italian like we would I would I definitely would feel my mom doesn't care but I would definitely feel looks because I guess I was just so used to being looked at especially as I'm sitting there and I'm like I'm a mixed kid my mom's from Italy my dad's black and then they're like well you don't look black mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know. I just, I just look how I look. I don't know. I got to talk to my parents about my genetics or something, but, um, well, I mean, yeah, I think that's just, I, yeah, that's all I really <laughs> remember if I was to think about my first, I mean, my first time remembering North Planet and coming to school. Um, but I, yeah. See, it's crazy. Cause like when I met you, I think a year after, because I think as far as we go back, it's probably like six. Because me and your brother were super close. Shout out to you, Isaiah, when you see this. Love you, brother. <laughs> Haven't hey, seen you in a while. Yeah. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> so, and I remember when I first met you, I was like, wow, you were like just a girl version of him. <laughs> like, it was, it was girl, crazy. Because yeah. you guys had like the same personality, like very, you know, cool, like very outgoing, bubbly, awesome. Like you guys are just amazing. And we just gravitate toward each other. Like I remember just joking with you 24-7 when we used to ride the bus <laughs> together. Then in school, sports, I mean, oh it's God. crazy. So after or I don't know, let's see, should I transition to like after school or you want to talk a little bit about school? Like how how do you want to do this? <laughs> I know you're like, oh you're okay. the host. <laughs> yeah. Like high school, high school. Well, when did you leave Western? I left Western second semester freshman year, and I went to Douglasburg two six, you know Fayetteville, and uh, now that was a culture shock right there because yeah. Western was so different compared to like Fayette, well, like Douglasburg, but like right. yeah, like so I remember I seen you before I left. Then I went to Western's prom. Mm-hmm. Oh well, I went to the homecoming. And I seen you there, and oh, I went yeah. to couple, actually, I went to a couple of the games too because I remember you. You had some games at Western when you, um I think you was on soccer team, right? Or yeah, I think team. it was on the soccer team. Yeah. Oh no, I was on the soccer team. Now I think. No. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, I remember yeah. seeing you because every time you guys would play bird, I will always make sure I try to come and see you guys, no matter what. Story. And we rare. I remember that we rare because I I only played uh three years. Mm-hmm. Um. Tennis, I played all throughout high school, but um, for for soccer, I only played three years because um, the coach was leaving. Oh. And I, it, do you remember Coach West? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, that's my girl. Mm-hmm. And so um, whenever she is, she is just like family. And so whenever she left, 
I was like, yeah, no, I'm not going to play soccer again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wasn't as – when it comes to playing tennis versus soccer, I only played soccer because, I mean, I was used to playing it in Italy. And then also just, like, keep me keep me moving, keep me in shape, you know? Um, <laughs> but compared to tennis, I truly enjoy tennis. That was – that was – my sport compared to the soccer i'm like eh, i'm just whatever i mean i sat on the bench the majority of the time and i was like you know what eh, soccer is okay i'm not really into it plus i'm not really good at it so like that's <laughs> <makes sense. laughs> but oh, tennis, I, was like, yes. I remember you was out there getting it <laughs> I, I was i was getting something all right i'm not sure what i was getting but <laughs> <laughs> But no, tennis, I was actually really good at tennis, and I think that was why I consider it my sport, but I miss it. I miss it. Definitely, because that's one thing I, I miss sports today. Like, I, if I can go back and play football, do wrestling all over, like, I, man, if I go back to my younger days and just do track, I don't even care. And I, and I you know, yeah, I don't like running, but <laughs> I, I just miss sometimes, I miss like the old days, you know. So. so easy. Yeah. High school. I, I absolutely loved high school. I mean, okay. <laughs> hey, that's what it is. My siblings. When you it's live at good. home, guys. <laughs> hey, it's all good. <laughs> but, um, they, hey, they don't know what a closed door mean. All right. <laughs> I'm the same way. Like, you know, it's a, like, I know I'm over 20 something episodes in, but like it's a team effort because like I have a crazy dog that I have to put up. I have my mom just like keep an eye on him, please. And then it's like I got my niece, which I know we talked a little prior before. Like, I mean, it's no holds bar. Like, I mean, I'll be in the middle of recording, she might want to run out, but you know, like, <laughs> and I gotta edit this out or whatever. But I, my sister helps me. <laughs> you might have to edit that out, but honestly, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I might keep that in there. <laughs> I, might, I might keep it all. Transition into living at home during a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I was I was gonna jump into you know college and becoming a teacher, which is, to me is amazing. And then we could jump to the pandemic. So yeah, we, we I guess we could. College. Yeah, what was college like for you? Because like me, like I've haven't really went college is not for everyone <laughs> honestly college is really not i honestly my dad either said military or college and if you want to go into the military you still got to go to college because <laughs> <laughs> my my dad he entered into the military when he was um he, he just turned 18 mm -hmm. and he actually went he actually saw a commercial um about like it was like old school military commercial and that's when he was like i'm gonna join the military granted like living and especially with him and during that that during the time that he was i mean it was the 60s but he grew up with his grandmother his parent he didn't really he didn't know his dad and his mother died when he was seven and mm -hmm. so his grandmother raised him and it was him and i I think like eight or nine of his siblings are big. Oh wow. So my dad being the the oldest boy was just like, I need to do something. I need to give back. You know, mm -hmm. I, I can't um, you know, I can't I can't depend on someone. I can't. Yeah. And so that's why he went to the military and then every time he would get a check, he would send some of that back to his grandma. Oh. And with my mom, my, my grandparents, uh, my mom's side had a restaurant business, a hotel restaurant in Italy. Wow, and awesome. my mom, well, it was awesome, but my mom really didn't like the experience because she constantly worked. I mean, when you're oh, in a yeah. hotel restaurant business, it's every single day, holidays, weekends, you know, um, and, and especially because it was their business, it was a family owned business. Mm -hmm. um that was their means so my mom I mean my mom only has a brother but she really didn't she really didn't have like a good relationship with her parents because they were constantly working mm -hmm. and so my mom spent a lot of time with her grandmother um and then she met my dad 
And so, you know, then she had to move. So my mom didn't really get an educate. My mom got her associates, I think like a couple, I think when she was in her forties, which is great. I mean, Hey, get it it when you get it. Exactly. Age is nothing. And especially getting a diploma. I mean, who's going to know, right? There's so many other people out there. That's like the same age as you. That's going to the same thing that you're doing. And it's just like, it's just, and that's another thing. It's just like, ah, I have to spend all this money and do all this just for a piece of paper. And, and that's, that's what was like killing me for a long time mm-hmm. where I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to go. Cause I always felt in my like heart, like I could do what I want to do without yeah. having to be thousands of dollars in debt for a piece of paper. Like, and you know, like us, you know, coming from like a small town and it was like, everyone's dream either go to the military, or go into the, uh, to a university and all of my friends or all of our friends really they like alvin do not go into music alvin do not go to university so like there <laughs> so i'm learning from them and i'm just like well what do i do you know and that's yeah. when podcasting was was born at least for me right. and <laughs> like, we'll see where it goes from here you know I, and, and that's fun too it's like as long as you're happy which you know, with my dad, he was just very, and I understand, especially when someone, thankfully, I had my dad paying for my tuition, which is super rare. But, um, you know, especially with him, he's like, what's coming out of your pocket? You know, he's like, Mm -hmm. I'm paying for your education. So you're going to go get your education. Mm -hmm. And with me, I've always loved school. Always, always, always loved school. I don't know how. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I know I'm weird. (laughs) No, no, no. You're good. I mean, I do remember you was always a great student. It was just. uh, And especially when you have bomb. I'm trying to cuss. But especially when you have bomb teachers, it makes a big difference. I mean, makes a big difference. And so going to UNC Charlotte, I had, especially because I graduated with my English degree. Mm -hmm. Originally. I wanted to go into, um, okay, so let me backtrack it. So I did community college. Mm -hmm. I'm super close to my family. You know that. So after I graduated high school, I was like, you know what? And there's always a stigma going to community college. Which I don't know why. Like it's, you're, you're trying to better yourself. And it's like, like some people don't need to go a four year plus to university. Like I try to be like all the time. I don't care if you go to CCCC or FTCC or I'm just saying places around us, you know, Sand Hills or whatever, like get that damn degree. Like it, frick, fuck it. Fuck what people think. (laughs) (laughs) So I, you know, I made the, and my dad was actually shocked because Isaiah, my two older brothers didn't do community college. And then, I was just very still, you know, I'm going to stay at home. I'm going to, you know, help my siblings out, help my parents out with the house. And I'm going to just go to community college. And, and I think I also wasn't mentally prepared to live by myself away from my family. Cause that's all I've lived. I mean, I told you my siblings were my only friends. So mm-hmm. I think it was just very, I, I wasn't mentally right to live by myself. <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay. So um, I did community college and then I transferred to Charlotte and Charlotte is very known for business. That's, that's all they do. Mm-hmm. So at the time I wanted to become a flight attendant. That's like, oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. So that's like my dream. I want, I've always wanted to be a teacher, but I also want to, Oh my gosh, I'm everywhere. I also want to be a <laughs> It. You ain't changed much. <laughs> right, exactly. And um and so when I went into college, I went into an international business degree. Oh. Without knowing that um business equals math. Mm-hmm. And that I cannot do. <laughs> so I think I had my I had a mental breakdown. I remember I got out of class, I got up at like a I think it was a a statistics class or a um um what is it called economics class mm-hmm. something yeah. something crazy and I was basically failing and I was calling my dad and I was crying and I was like oh my gosh I don't know what to do I don't know what to do and my backup was become was to go into special ed mm-hmm. because 
during my um, during my two years at CC, I was babysitting or watching um, two boys who are autistic. Mm-hmm. And I was just thrown in it. The mom was like, hey, do you want to watch my kids? Because I was referred to by someone. And I said, yeah. And then and when I came to her house to babysit, she says, oh, they're autistic. And I said, I don't know what that is, but okay. Like, I was super up for it. But then it made me want to get into special ed and essentially become a teacher that I've always... Do you remember Miss Mills from high school? Uh. I don't I, so. I'm better with faces sometimes. I don't think I remember Miss Mills. No. That's okay. Well, I had her for an English teacher, and I she basically was the one to kind of she opened my eyes into becoming a teacher or becoming an English teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really wanted to go into sped or special ed, so I I quickly went to my advisor and I changed my major, and like everything was good. And then my, I think I was just having a really hard time with adjusting to Charlotte. Oh my gosh. My first year, my first semester of being in Charlotte was crazy. Um, I think I was just trying to really prove myself and to Mm -hmm. prove my parents to be like, Hey, I can live on my own. Um, Mm -hmm. I can be self-sufficient. Um, thankfully, Thankfully, I had my brother Isaiah. So Isaiah went to A and T, right? I know, bro. <laughs> right, right, right. Isaiah went to A and T, and then he transferred to Charlotte. Oh, so I, wow. I, I went to visit him. I think it was a summer before I transferred. Oh, a summer before I was thinking of where I wanted to transfer, and mm-hmm. Charlotte was one of them. So thankfully, I had my brother with me to help me out. But I was just so focus on getting a job and mm-hmm. work and it's expensive in Charlotte. So I wanted to have my own type of money instead of depending on my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was just so focused on working and getting a job. And I had so many jobs. I'd be like, mm, sorry, not doing what we want you to do type of deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, my GPA dropped and Mm -hmm. then I had to change my major. So that was like really sad at that point because I wanted to become, granted, it's not the end of the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm doing, I'm a sped teacher now, but at that point I was just very discouraged and I was like, Oh my gosh. But I can only imagine. Cause like you go in there, you basically, going there wanting one thing to be the flight attendant you change your majors now you have to change your major again so like i know that's got to be derailing a little bit i just honestly when i had to change my major again just because my gpa dropped one point oh i'm talking to you unc charlotte (laughs) we're coming for you you. um i was just like okay am i going to change my major again like i honest i kind of felt not dumb, but I was just like, I can't, I'm not stable. Like, mm-hmm. sh- why did I even transfer, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I changed my major to English. Mm. And yeah, and so with English, I was more flexible. I did, you know, children's English literature, and I learned about um, American English and, um, just different types of English, (laughs) but in the, in the form of texts. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we learned a lot. Well, my minor is a children's literature minor. Um, so I can become a publisher if I want to, which that's, that's later on in life. That's coming, right? That's coming. Definitely. Cause I, um, I got a book ready. (laughs) <laughs> hey, if you need and, me to help you need me to proofread i got you oh yeah and I, i'm gonna wait till i get more successful before i say stella look at this but i always I always said in my head especially when i was going through like like depression and stuff and it wanted to turn it around i always said i'm gonna take the greatest story never told to make it my own and i just live by that I like that. I like that. Thank you. That's good. Okay. <laughs> that's, and that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I've been striving for ever since. Really since 
when I leave Western. <laughs> That's when it started. That's when that's when it's that's when things started to get started. crazy. So about 2012, 13. And now it's 2021. Wow, 2021. Wow. But it yeah. literally that's how I live it. And it's awesome. Like, see, we're we're gonna do more business together. <laughs> yes, and we're good. We're good. But yeah, that's undergrad. That's you and you, Charlotte, but <laughs> Oh, it was good. I mean, I'm, I've am i never been the really big party type and mm-hmm. going, um, no. And I think because I did two years of community college, mm-hmm. that kind of calmed me down. Even though my parents are like, look, you get your education first and then you can party. Okay. Mm-hmm. I never went into any little like frumpy, weird parties in Harnett County. Mm-hmm. I never, <laughs> never <laughs> any bonfires. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but, I've, been, um, I've been to a couple of bonfires with you. No, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, yeah, of course. I but like, it. I never came home stumbling, you know. Yeah, I mean? of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, I never was a really big crazy party person, and I, I mean, Charlotte, Charlotte stays busy, stays clubbing. I mean, people are just insane, especially now. Ugh. <laughs> um, now charlotte is a everyone wants to be there everyone oh, wants yeah. to be there everyone wants to be there there's literally apartments on top of apartments and it's just kind of crazy like visiting there because i still have my friends there like basically all my friends are there in charlotte um but it's kind of weird going back because it's just crowded right it's so crowded but it's i actually was just talking my mom like this morning about like crowded like cities and stuff and um like waterbury connecticut where i'm from is up there i think it was ranked like number six in the Mm. world but like charlotte was like if i'm not mistaken i don't want to get the numbers wrong but i think charlotte was like number three like as far as crowded cities and i haven't been to charlotte (sighs) I don't think ever. <laughs> I've been Raleigh, but my sister went to Charlotte. She went to school in Charlotte, and she would she yeah. loved it. Out there, she went to uh, the Art Institute out there. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she loved it out there, and she always talked about uptown and then like downtown and all those other places. And at the time when she was in school, they, they it wasn't the Hornets yet; they were the Bobcats still, like the basketball team and all this other stuff. So, <laughs> trust me, I know about Charlotte. So let's. let's I love it. Yeah, but I don't want to go back. Oh yeah. <laughs> so let's dive in to okay, now, like you was in college, you graduated, then becoming a teacher. So like when we were, you know, when we were in school, teachers were either the greatest thing or like the worst thing. And you know how some of the kids, you know, like we went to school with someone make their life live in hell. Did that ever scare yeah. you a little bit? Like going like, oh my god, I'm really about to become a teacher, like kids are crazy, blah blah blah. Or like was you like, I'm ready for it? I mean, kids are crazy everywhere. I mean, that's how, like, I mean, and and that's another thing. It's just, like, when I was in the process of becoming a teacher, I was actually um, doing a part, like, half-half. So I was part-time at the middle school Mm -hmm. and then part-time at the high school. I was, I was pregnant, so, I mean, I really didn't occurred to me how messy it was going to be <laughs> um because i was still unsure uh as to if like if i wanted to stay with middle school if i want to stay with high school i know definitely not the elementary kids oh no oh no no um but i was in that half and half position and it didn't really hit me how chaotic it was going to be until after I had my daughter because I'm basically balancing two part-time jobs. And when it comes to like IEP, which is individualized educational program, it's just essentially every kid who is EC has an IEP. Um, And so I was just super, I was just, it was paperwork between a middle schooler and a high school is very different. And I was just getting confused because I also had two different, they're called coaches. And what they 
they're just they they just been in the EC program for a long time and they give you feedback and all that jazz. Kind of like so, mentors in a way, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and we, it, I was just hearing one thing different from the other. And when after you have a baby, and I mean, I'm still like that now. I have like short term. I have to write everything down. I have to make. Um, like my planner is filled some, and especially after I had a baby, I had to like give myself a timer to eat like that's wow. how crazy it was. And especially as a new teacher and a young teacher as well, I was so focused. I, I was just like, boom, I want to do everything right. I was so focused. I would like normally turn off my phone when I got, when I got into my room, just so I can focus. And I didn't want to kind of be stigmatized because I was also going to grad school. So mm -hmm. I was going to grad school. I was finish up, finishing up assignments. I was finishing up paperwork. I was um, taking care of my daughter. So it was just a lot. Stella, how did you not like go crazy? Like <laughs> that's a lot of change in like, and I mean, you know, we're still going. young. Yeah. Kind of like we're, we're still young. And it's like, before you know it, like, okay, like, you know, nine months before you're probably like, oh, you know, just trying to bounce something. Like, I'm a new mom now, and now I'm trying to, you know, yeah. transition from school to school to do I really, you know, want to continue this? Right. You know, like, how did you do it? Like, what's your oh story? my gosh, I and that's why I wasn't like backtrack to your previous story. I mean, previous question. That's why I wasn't scared. I wasn't nervous because, I mean, I, I'm just like go 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 go. There's there, don't need don't you don't need to be scared. I don't know what you need to be scared for about these little kids. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still always nervous, especially the ones who have um behavioral. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm still kind of kind of tiptoeing around that, but um, well, I think it's the like the internet that scares people because like you see remember those videos up there back when Vine was really hot and you would see like they had like a whole section like someone combined like all these like crazy kids like one kid picked up a chair and hit another kid with it or you know took a ruler from a teacher and smacked the teacher and all so like i think that stigma of like kids are crazy stay away <laughs> was going around but you're like no nah. I'm like, hey, I used to be one of you crazy kids. I don't sound like I'm 60 years old. Yeah, I was going to say, you're getting old now, Stella. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like, because I'm young, I can kind of be, because right now I'm with, because I accepted a full-time job at the high school. So now I'm with ninth graders. And with ninth graders, I still like, because they still kind of have like that middle school mindset. Mm -hmm. But I can also talk to them like a, like an older sister, in a sense. Um, I'm yeah, I'm very relaxed, very laid back. And I mean, it's, oh, especially now, especially being a, not only a new teacher, but a remote or like a technology based mm -hmm. teacher, because I was super excited about the whole pen and paper aspect of teaching. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, computer, Everything is digital. So, so yes. I think this would be a great time to transition to the pandemic and what's it like being first first of all what's it like just pandemic in your side of town and then second like what is the pandemic like being a teacher because that was one of the like the most talked about thing on the news was school system and the, the pandemic so how is it like on your side i mean i need to like get like a pen and paper and say okay this is question one this is question <laughs> all right i'll start, I'll start off first what was the pandemic like for you before we get to i guess your you know, the career, like just for you in general. Right. Um, so think, so I, when I became, I found out that I was pregnant in October. Okay. So I was, you know, working still. And then when it became a little bit too much for me to work and I thankfully had supportive parents who can take care of me and my unborn child, mm -hmm. um, I was, I decided to go home, um, and move back home, which, I had like a new space and I was like, I love the freedom that I had. And I loved like the little job that I had during undergrad, but because I was starting my grad school, mm -hmm. I, and it was, uh, it was originally in an online um, platform. It was, it was an online degree type of deal. Yeah. It was still through UNC Charlotte. 
um, but all the classes is online. So I was like, my dad was just like, well, what are you doing in Charlotte? You know, like if your grad program is online, why don't you come back home and save money, especially being pregnant? Um, oh, shout out to your dad, man. That's awesome. You know, right? My dad. Oh. It's crazy. Love him to death. Love him. But he got me there. So, and, and that's how I am. It's like he was, that's how I kind of get things in my head is if you're super honest, super blunt, super, like a hundred with me. And so he was like, girl, like you really have no, Charlotte's done. That's what he said. He's like, Charlotte's done. You're done, girl. <laughs> you got to focus on that baby. And really, I didn't know how to take care of myself when I was pregnant, I was just, I mean, I had a, I was super sleepy, first of all. And I, whenever I would wake up, I would get super hungry, but I was so tired to feed myself. I just, I really couldn't support myself. Um, and so I decided to move back home. I moved back home in March. Um, I got the position at Western the 3rd of March. Shout out to Western. So, throw the dubs. Fire over us. Go Eagles. Go <laughs> Cardinals. <laughs> but thankfully, everything was lined up for me. I was moving. And then I was also able to have a job when I moved back home. Because I still wanted that consistency. I I just need I every I need to have something every single day on my calendar. I just need to feel like I'm doing something proactive. And my dad's always my dad taught that and instilled in instilled in us that you have something to do every single day. Um. So thankfully, I had a job that I can come back to, and it was teaching. So we know that, and that's what my dad has always said. And he's like. When you think of a job, think of go into a job that's always going to be there. Mm. Um, and it's and that's what I teach my kids now. I'm like, okay, do you guys see who's kind of left standing? You know, so he's always like, go look into nursing. Nursing's always going to be there. Go in military. Mil- I mean, people need to protect whatever they need to protect. Mm-hmm. Um, teachers, and so I'm thankful that I'm in a position that didn't hurt me through the pandemic um especially when i was pregnant when i was like frantically like ah i need to save for this baby oh my gosh like Mm -hmm. ah so um yeah the pandemic yes it had some pros and cons especially because when we heard about this whole virus and what it was doing to people and how it was affecting the economy and everything shut down I shut down times 10. Mm. So I didn't go anywhere. Um, I, if I wanted something to eat, my little, my little brother was like my little chauffeur. Um, (laughs) So every time I wanted something or every time I needed something from the grocery store, he would go for me. So I am so try not to cry. I I was like, but but my family is a a hundred. I do not know what I'll probably have to, you know, admit myself to some sort of specialized hospital because if I did not have my family through all this, I don't know what I would do. So I had to, and I was kind of do this whole thing. If you're not able to do anything or if you're not able to go anywhere, that really affected my mental health. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, I'm sure it affected everyone's mental health um, because I couldn't go anywhere. And if I, and my mom was so crazy. Oh my gosh, not crazy, but she was just so like, ah, no, you stay inside. Ah, you need to wear two masks. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so I didn't have any friends. I just moved back to Charlotte and I was at home and, you know, like I couldn't really do anything during the summer and. I don't know. I guess I was just being selfish in the sense of like, hey, I can't do anything, me. But <laughs> it's also like, girl, it could be much worse. Mm. So it seemed like the pandemic didn't affect you too, too much as far as like your everyday life. But what about the schooling? Because like a lot of like people I work with, like they have kids that were like, half of it's online then they may come to school like two times out the week or something like that. Like, what about for you? Um, so at first, I remember, you know, super excited getting my classroom set up um, at the middle school because I was still there. And literally two weeks later, everything changed to remote. 
Um, and that's when the pandemic hit. And so it was kind of, I was just straight chilling. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie from March until, you know, the summer, I just focused on paperwork and IEPs because I didn't have my own classroom. I was still kind of, I was still co-teaching, which was just like, you kids just have two teachers. And essentially I'm there to help everyone. Um, but I am supposed to focus on my EC kids, if that makes sense. Oh yeah. Um, so I really didn't have any responsibilities or any sort of, I mean, I had responsibilities, but like, <laughs> it was also nice because I kind of, focused on my body and focused on my daughter and just kind of you know prepare myself and prepare her um so I didn't have any lesson plans I really didn't have any sort of grading or I mean I tr I was like hey teachers use me use me mm -hmm. um but they knew that I was pregnant so they were just like you know what enjoy this time mm -hmm. um and so I just focused on my meetings, on my paperwork. And I remember just, you know, typing and learning about, because I, I'm, I'm, I was new to EC. I was new to mm -hmm. paperwork and IEPs and behavior and all this jazz. Um, and so it was nice that I could have people that I can virtually meet and they can help me out with the paperwork just so, because if I mess up, it's it's bound by law. So these are legal mm. documents. That's yeah. crucial. Legal documents. So if some, if a parent feels like that their child is not getting the appropriate education, I can go to court. Like this is, wow. this is serious stuff. So um, I'm glad you're touching on that. Cause I don't think a lot of people really know that or understand that. Yeah, like that's why you guys need to treat your teachers, right? Please. <laughs> all of them. They're under enough stress as it is. <laughs> exactly. So it was nice that I got, to, I studied and I looked over drafted IEPs and previous IEPs. And um, I had some teachers that helped me out. So it was nice that I got to focus on that because that was the main component of, mm -hmm. of my job. Um, so, yeah, I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you answered the question and then forgot it. <laughs> but you, I basically it was about the pandemic and how okay. it was. But the yeah. piggyback off that, like, what was the most challenging thing about being a teacher? Like, I know we touched a little bit on it, but not as much. Like, either pre-pandemic or post, or not post, but during the pandemic. Like, what's the most challenging thing? Man, I have yet to find the most challenging thing about teaching, but definitely now it's the participation. So mm -hmm. I would say, I would, re I would rephrase the question and be like, what's the most difficult part about being a teacher virtually or teaching Te virtually? Teaching virtually, yeah. Because participation, I mean, all teachers can attest to it that this participation is so rough. It's rough. Mm -hmm. um it's and also because the kids when they're virtual because the majority so I have included so I focus on kids who have ADHD and ADD and behavior um I don't want to say issues uh deficits mm -hmm. um and so my kids are learning disabilities and so it's very hard to show someone virtually something especially because I teach I teach reading and I teach math. So mm -hmm. half my day is math, half my day is reading. So it's very hard to teach and show my students virtually and to also keep them focused, especially if yeah. they're in their home. I mean, it's easy for me to just jump on this bed and just forget about my entire day. Um, so nice. that's the very... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Good night. Mm -hmm. um, so I, that's the very hardest part is, okay, the student is a virtual student. Are they picking up what I'm putting down? Are they understanding um, context clues? And I mean, I'm not sure if Google's helping them, you know? And that's the thing is like, and I see that with my kids who are face-to-face. -face, so much, half of the time they're virtual and half the time they come face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. And I can see 
okay, you got a 75 on that test, but is that your 75? Mm -hmm. you know? um, so I think that's, and I know that that's not their 75. <laughs> so it's very hard to like, I'm sitting there one-on-one -on -one with you and showing you, you know, and I'm like, okay, we did five problems. I want you to just do the first step by yourself and they can't do that. And I see that they got 75 on their virtual quiz. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I can kind of put two and two together, together and just be like, academic honesty is just not. Oh, it's just not non-existent. There. I mean, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't existing when we were in regular <laughs> school. I mean, I mean, yeah. you know, you know, we had some kids that were, that was some. Right. And actually, <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like, you know, if I really don't understand anything, yes, I can go home and like, look at two or three problems and kind of teach myself the rest. But these mm -hmm. kids, they have the internet 24 mm seven. -hmm. And so they can easily look up what's the greatest common factor of nine. And they have it right there in front of them or, you know, multiplying polynomials. It's like, Oh, I can look at math way and I can look at these third party programs. And Oh, they just did the entire problem for me. That's so, true. It's very hard. Um, it's very, it's, I think that's the hardest part is the participation and knowing that they're cheating. <laughs> <laughs> they're cheating. There's n like nothing you can really do about it. Like exactly. That. And that's the thing. It's just like, I mean, you really don't need to cheat. I mean, and I mean, you really don't, especially because teachers now, we want that one on one. We want you. We want students to be. Oh, Miss Hagwood, I have some questions. Or Oh, Miss Hagwood, can we meet after class? We can, oh my gosh, we're fiending for that. We're mm -hmm. fiending for it, and it's just. And they don't. They're like, hey, I got Google. Sorry, girl. <laughs> it's crazy how because like that was like when we were in school. Like that was. I mean, Google was out, but it was like. Like, it was hard to use the internet like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, for us, because, like, you know, got a teacher 24 7 in your face. <laughs> not only that, but we did everything pencil and paper. I mean, I know it's not, like, oh, not that long ago, but these kids, they, they turn in their assignments on their laptop. Mm. So it's mm. also, so they have, and, and that's what kind of like <gasps> kind of shocked me when I first started as teaching is that I went into, their class and even the eighth, even middle schoolers, they always have their laptops. They always bring their personal laptops with them. So crazy. I'm like, what? they're not doing everything on pen and paper or pen and paper. I'm like, oh my gosh. I know I didn't agree. I know I'm not old, but like, oh. and that's that's how you're able to retain things as well as if you're physically writing it and you're seeing and you're feeling, you know, your pen and. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I remember Mr. Rice back in the day when it was like math or even Miss Rice, even like English wise back at Western, you know, it was always basically show your work, show your work. Let me see where show you messed work. up or let me see how you got this right. Now it's like that. That's gone. I'm stressed. I'm stressed. <laughs> so, Stella, with you basically like having to juggle all of that, what? Like, what's your hobbies? Like, do you, what, what do you do on your downtime? Like, it seems like it's kind of like, go, 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 go 24 seven. Do you have anything that kind of like just relaxes you or to keep you straight? Um, getting out. Um, and kind of at first for me, because I mean, throughout this whole pandemic, I stayed home and my daughter, she was, she was premature. She was very premature. Um, why? I don't know. The doctors were kind of puzzled. Her, this, I'm backtracking, but her birth was kind of, first of all, it was unexpected. She was, so she was supposed to be born the beginning of July. Mm -hmm. Instead, she was born towards the end of May. Oh, oh. So we have almost like a month, a month and a half of just her. Thankfully, you know, it was kind of, it was just super crazy, but trying to keep it short, she was, she was born three pounds. And I felt it was before I was, I went to, and the thing was, is that the week before she was, the week before I gave birth, she was, I went to the doctors and we had a sonogram and everything was fine. A doctor's like, oh, she's growing well. Like everything's good. But um, she was three pounds because during the third trimester, during the last trimester, that's when they start like bulking up. That's when mm -hmm. they start getting their meat. Um, and I, even though I was 
I was at like, cause I gave birth, I think it was about 28 weeks, 29 weeks, weeks, which is good, which is normal. I, she didn't, you know, she didn't have her third. She didn't have that third trimester. Mm-hmm. Granted, thankfully, oh my gosh, she, nothing was, you know, developing, developmental, developmentally. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Develop- <laughs> developing. <laughs> yeah, she was, she was okay. everything was good. Her brain was normal size. Her heart was fully grown. Um, all she just had to do was get big. Um, she's a miracle she very much is and like till this day that i mean i wasn't stressed my blood i mean my symptoms my health i've always been good i've I've rarely been sick so it was kind of a shock i I just needed to know like why like why is she coming when she's not supposed to come Mm -hmm. um so that was very stressful but um hobbies no such thing when you have kids. <laughs> um, but your kid, your kid is your hobby, basically. Exactly. Um, but my mom, oh geez, my mom is everything. Um, so she watches Journey um, while I'm at work, and if I want to go meet up with a friend, if I or if I want to do this, my mom is. <laughs> More than welcome to snatch her up and take her for a couple of hours just so I can enjoy myself because she couldn't enjoy herself with the five of us. Mm-hmm. Um, so my hobbies, I just like taking care of myself. I like going to get my, you know, my nails done, my, you know, my a facial every once in a while. Uh, okay. Go grab like a, a beard or two with some <laughs> <laughs> no, didn't expect that <laughs> <laughs> oh look at you Stella <laughs> but, I mean that's really it just getting out and just being outside I mean that as long as I'm outside everything is good but I before having a kid um, <laughs> I did like playing tennis still I still actively play tennis um especially you know during undergrad at Charlotte um I liked reading I like sitting on the canopy that they had in uh, the hammocks that they had in on campus and just read. Okay. Um, other than that, that's that's those are my hobbies. What's your, fa- <laughs> what's your favorite book? Because I'm I'm big into reading after school. If that's that's crazy thing, because I hate reading before. <laughs> I love reading. I mean, I guess it's just like the English English major in me. Um, mm-hmm. but I the last book I just read was um, Becoming by Michelle Obama. Mm-hmm. So good. So good. I also, I think, Alvin, I think you would also really, have you heard of Trevor Noah? Um, no, I'm sorry. Comedian? No, I haven't. Okay. So, but, well, but, hey, you, you put me on. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a comedian. Just, um, he's a comedian and he um, is also biracial. He grew up in South Africa during the apartheid, which was basically like, Think of it is like um, segregation in South Africa. Oh, and so he grew up and he talks about it and he sounds so real. Like he's, oh, he's a, yes, duh, he's a real person, but it sounds like he's talking to you in this book and he's so carefree and he's, oh, I love him to death as you can tell, but sound he, like we're pretty much the same. I got to read this. He's that good. Exactly. He is so good. So, I th- anyone, anyone would really enjoy. Um, I forgot the title of the book, but um, it's by Trevor Noah. It's one of his. It's one of his books. I'll check it out on Audible because that's what I love using a lot, especially when I'm driving because I drive a lot. But yeah. Stella, you you mentioned your parents and how big of support they are. And one thing I love, like everybody who's on my show, I always say, "What is like your favorite quote? Like good." Um, on good term, bad terms, bad times, good time, something that was instilled in your head by either your parents or just something you love. Like, what is your favorite quote? Um, my favorite quote. Okay, so this is not really a quote, but my mom, I got a good. Well, sorry. It could be. Yeah, so it could be a quote we're saying. <laughs> um, but my mom always told me to be independent. She always wanted me to be independent, and she's always that's like the one thing she really instilled in my especially with my sister and I because we're women um 
she always wanted us to be independent. She was like, don't, because in a sense, she kind of had to depend. She had to depend on my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, granted, I mean, she, and she had to move from her different, from her country because she had my oldest brother. Mm-hmm. So she had to depend on him and they didn't really know. I mean, mom barely spoke English. Um, so it was really weird for them. Um, but my dad was like, look, I got to go back to the States. Um, I want to be in this in my son's life. And I know that you're definitely not leaving him. So like, how does America sound? <laughs> <laughs> so my mom instilled independence in my sister and I all the time. And I think, and that's why she's very much like, go get your degree, go get your degree, do it while you're young, go do it. Go do it while journey's still baby. Um, because once she starts growing, once she starts moving, like, you won't really have time to sit down and read an article for your class or write up a paper, um, even though there are moms doing it right this moment, which I applaud them. Um, but I think one of my, my dad's so funny. My dad has super funny quotes. Um, but I'm not sure if this really applies to life, but my dad's famous quote he'd always say is, if a frog had a glass ass would it jump <laughs> that's different <laughs> honestly till this day i have no idea what it means maybe some of some of your viewers know what that means yeah um, please any of my peeps please comment or message me if not, that's, if not some that's black a good parents one. please tell me what that means <laughs> no you but you said one more time uh, if a frog mm-hmm. had a glass ass, would it jump? <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So I, bas- I basically, I just, I think it's just like, um, I, don't, I don't know. I, I honestly have no idea. I really have no idea. But <laughs> I mean, it's just like, hey, frogs jump. And ooh, what if they had a glass ass? Would it still jump? But frogs naturally jump so i think it just means like if you're so used to doing something or if you know that you have to do something go do it like you're going to do it like genetically or like environmentally if you have to do it i think that's i think that's what it means it's just like hey yeah. don't change basically don't change because you're still gonna do what you want to do <laughs> that's that's so true that was that's awesome i, I think I th- so and I think that's a great spot to uh, wrap up. Stella, thank you so much for just taking the time out your day of your crazy life as, you know, we just talked about. And um, I'm so appreciative of it. My gratitude is like through the roof because, you know, we go way back. And really, this is our first time since forever for us really to catch up. Yeah, for real. Well, whenever you're free, please let me know because I really want to really wanna go grab a drink or two <laughs> <laughs> well, but now i do want to catch up with you outside of life and you know i know that you're also working as well but just let me know and oh. I, because i we need to get out oh my god True. We, need and get out. we need to enjoy ourselves i'm 100 um, percent down you know like it's been literally years so stella i'll hit you up definitely <laughs> but thank you so much for having me this was so fun i can mark this off my bucket list podcast yeah. Yeah. yes thank but you thank you so much alvin it was so good to see you no problem great to see you i miss you so much i <laughs> wish you nothing but more success and stay strong like you always do always and you stay safe, stay Th- safe. yeah definitely stay safe <laughs> take care stella